it's me Michaela and welcome or welcome back to my channel I'm joined today by my chicken that was made for me by my best friend so I was thinking that it would be fun to do an updated bookshelf little tour today because I'm pretty sure like the one I made is now almost a year old and a lot has happened on my bookshelf since then I have a lot more books I started reading romance, I stopped reading as much fantasy, I've gotten a lot of rearranging happening and all that jazz. I thought 2024 is January, new year, new bookshelf tour, right? Right. That's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to show you around the bookshelf. Obviously, one thing that wasn't here last year was this chair. I got this in the past year and I love it. It's normally out of my balcony, but obviously um, it's January and this is Canada, so like I'm not on my balcony right now. And so for the time being, this is here. But the longer I have it here, the more I'm like, mm, I should get a chair to put in front of my bookshelf. Because this is like a cute little cozy corner, you know? So uh, put that on like the list of like things I want to buy that I'll definitely not get anytime soon because furniture is extremely expensive and I want to desperately buy a new couch. So let's talk a little bit. I mean, like, should I give like a little overview of my bookshelf? Basically, I have the shelves kind of, I guess, yeah, each shelf is kind of designated to a genre. So we have the top shelf is classics, but then I don't have that many classics. So the top shelf is also puzzles. It makes sense. So then the next shelf is YA fantasy, then we have adult fantasy, then we have mystery and thriller books, and then we have romance, general fiction, and then textbooks. And the bottom shelf is just chaos. With that being said, I suggest maybe we shall start at the top, work our way down, and go through the shelves in a little bit more detail, shall we? We shall. I've decided for us. Let's go. Okay. Where are my hands? Here they are. Here are the top two shelves of my bookcase. We have, of course, as I said, classics and puzzles. And then we have YA fantasy. Ignore that. We do have my two puzzles. This puzzle was here, in fact, last year. But this is a new puzzle I got for Christmas, and we love that. On top of the puzzles, obviously, we have cards. We have more cards. There's one thing about me. I'm going to collect the cards. I'm, in fact, going to keep every card anybody gives me ever, and I will use them as free decoration because they're cute and they're sentimental. Win, 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 win. Now, of course, we also still have the iconic 2006 Puppies and Dog calendar. It's still in the packaging with its one dollar sticker tag. This was given to me by a friend, kind of as a joke gift, and you know what? I still believe that one day this mint condition 2006 puppies and dog calendar will fund my retirement. I then also have my lovely little Irish lady. This is from my grandmother. I always keep this on my shelf. And then I have still my little ladybug game. On the shelf in terms of books, I have this Bronte Sisters bind up of Wuthering Heights, The Tenet of Wildfell Hall, and Jane Eyre. I then also have the Penguin English Library copy of Jane Eyre because I'm wanting to collect these editions of classic novels. And then I also have Dracula by Bram Stoker. So the collection I believe has tripled since my last bookshelf tour, but it's still not very big, so we're still working on that. So I will bring you down to a closer look now at the second shelf. Here we are with shelf number two. I really hope that shelf number one went well because honestly, I could not see anything the camera was recording, so hopefully that's okay. Anyway, we're moving on. So this is, as I said, my YA fantasy shelf. We do have a couple more cards decorating as knickknacks as well as this lovely little Polaroid of my plant in the center of my apartment when I initially moved in and had no furniture. I still, of course, have Red Queen. I do have an insanely long and not great quality video <laughs> where I read the entire series, but I only own the first book. I then have my Grishaverse here, Leigh Bardugo. 
We have the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Shadow and Bone, it was out on loan to my sister last year. My sister, in fact, still has it. I don't think she's read it yet, but that's fine. Take your time, girl. I'll get it back from you eventually. So I only have two and three here, and then I have the Six of Crows duology. I also recently got The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I got this from my bestie for my birthday. I then have The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini, Aragon Elders Brisinger, and Inheritance. And these three were from my family home. My parents sent them up to me. They're from when my sister read them as a kid. I recently bought Inheritance myself because I guess my sister stopped reading them before Inheritance came out. And I was like, I can't possibly only own three of the four books. And of course now there's a fifth book, but I'm living in my delusion that the fifth book actually doesn't exist. And we're sticking with that. I then have The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. This is kind of really wedged in here. I picked this up from a local secondhand bookstore just because I saw it on the shelf and I went, hey, I've never read that. And that's kind of another one of those famous YA fantasy series from when I was a kid that I never read. So I'd like to read it at some point. And then we have here my childhood Harry Potter books. Luckily, they fit on this shelf perfectly and I cannot possibly tell you how happy I was when that occurred because otherwise I probably would have had to just adjust all of my shelves and I really didn't want to have to rearrange that much but I keep all of my books in alphabetical order by author last name within the genre so that's why we have to see like Aviard, Into Bardugo, Black, Paolini, Pullman, Rowling. See how that goes? So fun, so cute, so organized. On the shelf number three here we have my adult fantasy again there's not a single place on this bookshelf that doesn't have a card of some sort on it i also now have a lovely little collection of indigo gift cards to use to buy more books as well as these little stickers that my bestie gave me again for my birthday but i'm so indecisive about things that i can't like dedicate myself to actually stick these anywhere so instead they're just sitting on my shelf for the time being i swear i'll get around to it eventually ken I promise. I then have a cute little tape measure. That's a snail. You'd be surprised at how often you use a tape measure when it's just at your disposal. I then have a little rock because who doesn't love a little rock? And I have my drink coffee, read books, and be cozy mug. This is ginormous so I use it instead to hold bookmarks and my glasses or one pair of my glasses why i only keep one pair of my glasses here and then my other glasses in another location i do not know cannot explain it my brain doesn't make any sense la di da di da i also have this fun little like it's like a wooden puzzle game where you can like take it apart and then put it back together i did it once and then i was like never again never again it is too complicated i can't i can't handle that so it just stays looking pretty in terms of books we have my one sci-fi novel, Dune. I read it just to kind of say I read it, honestly. And also the edition looked pretty, so that's why I bought it. I don't have any other reasoning for that. I then have the Poppy War Trilogy, my beloved Poppy War Trilogy. Probably one of my favorite series I read last year. I then have some Greek mythology retellings, Madeline Miller, Circe, and the Song of Achilles. I have these on my adult fantasy shelf, mostly because it seems like the best place to put them. I didn't really feel like they fit into any other genre better at least they're together and like mythology fantasy kind of feels the same i then have some mistborn books again the final empire book number one out on loan to my sister still for a long time but she is actually reading this one um so she'll get to finish it eventually and i'll get it back again i've already read them she can keep them as long as she needs but i did start reading Era 2 of Mistborn recently, so I have the first two books here of Era 2, Alloy La, Shadows Himself. I do want to finish reading the series, I just, as I said at the beginning, like I'm kind of not in a fantasy mood at the moment. I found I read the first two books when I wasn't totally in a perfect fantasy mood to read them, and I think I didn't like them as much as I could have because I wasn't really in the mood to be reading that genre, so it's on hold for now. I then have this bind up of The Lord of the Rings. This was just again in my family home and my parents mailed it to me because they're like you read things here you go and i will read it eventually i don't know if i'll actually read this copy because like this this is three chonky books in one even chonkier book it's on my shelf for now it's it's, it's on the shelf it stays there i then have 
my A Court of Thorns and Roses. Now you might be going, now Michaela, you said you put your books in alphabetical order by author last name and Mass clearly does not come before Sanderson or Tolkien. But that is because this is romanticy. So it's technically a different genre and that's why it's over here. And it also means that then the shelf can look prettier because it's like more balanced with the hardcover books on each side. I like it better this way. And I have twisted my logic to make it make sense. I haven't read any other Sarah J Maas. I do plan to. I want to read Throne of Glass for sure. I'm not quite sure about Crescent City just because I've heard so many people be so extremely disappointed in the second book that I'm like, do I really want to be diving into that? Undecided. Undecided. But I have heard really great things about Throne of Glass, so I will be reading that eventually. I kind of like started this year. The new covers are so cute, and if I got Throne of Glass, I would definitely get it in the paperbacks. Again, for some reason, like I like adult fantasy in hardcover, but like YA fantasy, I've kind of been liking reading in paperback. Also, hardcovers are what? expensive but like with with Court of Thorns Roses like I bought the first one in hardcover and then I got stuck you know like then you have to buy the rest in hardcover that's like the, the life you've chosen for yourself when you buy the first book in a series in hardcover I'm not gonna say a mistake was made because I do really like the series but like imagine how much extra money I could have if I just bought that first book in paperback instead you know so we're now getting down to shelves that like are nowhere near as jam-packed full as my other shelves so this is my mystery thriller shelf and what i like to do with these shelves i like the whole shelf isn't for one genre i like to have the genre split by age range so i have ya and then i have adult this is all mystery this is thriller i haven't read that many thrillers i want to read some more thrillers but again that's a thing for another day so i then also within the age range i do it by historical time period. So we have the Veronica Speedwell series, which is in the 1800s, I wanna say. I always forget if it's 1700s or 1800s, but it's very historical. Then we have A Killer, a Killer in King's Cove. I can never say the title of this book, A Killer in King's Cove. Oh my gosh. This is like set in the 50s in Canada. And then of course, all of these are present day. So then within the present day ones, then it's done by author last name. If I had like more historical books, again, it'd be done by author last name within the historical time period, within the age range, within the genre. That's how I organize my books. It's extremely complicated, but I love it. So I do have the Inheritance Games trilogy over here. Not that this is a trilogy anymore. Honestly, I'm kind of mad about it because there came out a fourth book and now there's going to be a fifth book. I thought this was a trilogy. Like I thought the I thought it was over. I thought we were done. And now there's just more books keep coming out over and over again. Like I'm not mad about it because I really like the series and I want to read more books. It's fun. But I was just like, I thought I was done reading a series and it turns out I'm not. And that's upsetting. <laughs> I then have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder Trilogy by Holly Jackson. I finished this series last year, really loved it. This one actually is finished, so I am done reading this series. Then I have, of course, Veronica Speedwell. I have the first four books now and I've read all of them. I absolutely adore this series and I'm really wanting to focus on trying to get caught up in this series this year because the ninth book is coming out, I think in the spring. If not in the spring, it's definitely coming out in 2024, so. I have a lot of catching up to do there. And like I said, A Killer in King's Cove. I have Finley Donovan is killing it. I've only read the first book and I'm really like on the fence about continuing on the series because I absolutely loved this first book. And I've just heard like everybody say it just like gets worse. Like the series just continually gets worse and worse and worse. And I do really feel like it's kind of like a one-time story book. I know it sets up the second book right at the end of it, but like I just feel like it's the premise of the book just doesn't make sense for it to be a series. I don't know how you make it a series and make it make sense. I then have Murder in the Family by Kara Hunter. I got this for my birthday and I'm so excited to get around to reading it. I just haven't read it yet because I know it's a whodunit and I think I kind of want to read it and like try and solve it. And that just involves more brain power than like just reading a book for fun. So I've been waiting for like the perfect moment to read that book, but I'm super excited for it. I then have the first two books in the Thursday Murder Club. Again, another series that I want to try and get caught up on this year because there's two more books in it that I don't own and haven't read. And then Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. Absolutely adored this book. So funny, so sarcastic, a good mystery. I think because of like the, the tone of it was so sarcastic, it, did, it wasn't really thrillery. It was just a really fun read. And then I have my thrillers. 
when no one is watching by Alyssa Cole, which I only, like, I liked it fine enough, but I didn't love it. And then I have Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister, probably one of my top five favorite books of last year. Absolutely adored this. And then, of course, we have another card, and we have my camera, and we have really wedge that in there there okay so this is like a little coin pouch shaped like a ladybug i just keep extra coins as well as extra like loyalty cards and stuff in here and i just find it's very useful for holding up a book let's move on to the last shelf of books shall we so we're really at the point now where i'm just trying to fill up shelves to make it look like they're full on this shelf okay so in terms of like knickknackage, we have my Bluetooth speaker. We have Tiny Stonehenge, okay? We love Tiny Stonehenge. I've never been to Stonehenge. This is from my aunt who has been to Stonehenge. We just love a little tiny knickknack around here. I then also just keep my sunglasses here. Again, don't ask why. I really should now move this over to like my entry unit since I actually have one now and I no longer need to keep these here, but whatever. I also have a candle. Would a bookshelf be a bookshelf if you don't have a candle on it? maybe not now on this side this is like my textbook kind of side i have like a french textbook from like years and years ago when i did a french course in uni i have a vegan cookbook from back when i was vegan <laughs> and then i have some textbooks and a for like singing and then my italian english dictionary that i also use for translation work because i went to school for opera and then in terms of like the actual like novel books on here we have grit by angela duckworth this is the non-fiction book that i always talk about how i had to read it for school and i just like didn't like it and um i keep it just because um i'm not gonna get rid of it because it reminds me of my hatred for the book and also because i spent money on it so i don't want to get rid of it i then have some literary fiction books here i don't have too many of them i have two taylor jenkins read books now i have the seven husbands of evelyn hugo and then i got daisy jones and the six as a gift and i also have read this before i've loved both of these i'm really a taylor jenkins read girl i also want to read like all of her other books but i think the next one i want to read is malibu rising i then have the women in the castle by jessica shattuck this is another like book that was in my parents house that they're like hey, here's a book, you read books, we're mailing you this book. <laughs> I will say, whoever came up with putting this color of font on this background on the spine of this book, it was not a great choice, you can barely read that. You really cannot read that writing, but whatever. I then have over here all of my romance books, and then also this is my friendship lamp with my bestie, so we can send each other little lights, and like, you can't tell me that's not adorable, because that's adorable. I'll just move it out of the way while we discuss my romance books. For romance, this has been the biggest addition to the shelf, really, because I was never a romance girl. And now, as I said in my 2024 reading goals video, like, I'm entering my romance era. I am becoming a romance girly, okay? We have first some historical romance. This is a League of Extraordinary Women series by Evie Dunmore. I recently got Portrait of a Scotsman and I started reading it and then realized that I was reading it like way slower than I was expecting I would read it and it was actually because I wanted to reread the other books. So then I read Bringing Down the Duke in like two days. I'm currently reading a Rogue of One's Own but I put it back on the shelf just you know like to have the shelf complete. And then we have my contemporary romances. So we have The Fine Print and Terms and Conditions by Lauren Asher. I do plan on getting Final Offer and I will be reading that so I can finish this series. And also because I have said it so many times, but I've heard that the third book is a lot of people's favorite book. So I'm excited. I then have Icebreaker and Wildfire by Hannah Grace. This is probably my favorite romance series. It's just so fun. And I'm kind of slowly be realizing that I may be a sports romance girl. I then have Beach Read by Emily Henry. This was, again, another gift that I got recently. And it has been on my wish list. I want to read some Emily Henry. And I feel like Beach Read is probably her most popular book. I'm not planning on reading it anytime soon because, again, it's called Beach Read. And... As a result, I assume it takes place during summer. It sounds like a fun little summer actual beach reading book. And what is it? Let's say it with me. It is January. It is winter. This is Canada. The vibes are not correct to be reading this book right now. So it's not happening. I then have Consider Me by Becca Mack. And no joke, I bought this book because it was pretty and because it was blurbed by Hannah Grace and for no other reason. I did read it. I had a fun time. I do think I'll read the other books in the series. But I will say, did nobody edit this book before they like trad published it simon and schuster canada did nobody on your team read this book there are so many 
typing errors in this book or just like a word is missing or like the grammar is just like so very wrong it really pulled me out of the story i was mad about it because i'm like this is a physical book i bought with my physical money my big girl money that i made from my big girl job and there are errors in it there are typos anyway I'm trying not to be upset about it, but very clearly I'm still upset about it. I'm also upset about the fact that the main character in this is a 25-year-old girl who apparently is a phys ed teacher who owns a house in Vancouver. If you're from Canada, you know that that is the most implausible thing to ever happen in a book. I'll talk about that when I do my January reading wrap-up at the end of this month, okay? You can come back next week for that. <laughs> but that is my romance shelf. And my, well, I guess not just my romance shelf. It's my romance, general fiction, nonfiction, and textbook shelf featuring sunglasses. So let's just move on to the chaos shelf and get it over with because I don't, I, look, we'll talk about it, but there's not much to say. So my tripod can't go low enough to actually show this shelf, but we're not going to be here long. I'm basically just showing you to be realistic, okay? We have knitting needles, circular knitting needles, a knitting kit, yarn, a book sleeve. This is just a little container that I keep extra like adapters and cords in. We have a microphone. We have the bag that my tripod came in that I never put it back into. And then we have music scores that desperately need better support because they are getting very floppy. And that is everything on the chaos shelf. So let's just pretend you didn't see that. Okay, bye. There was my updated bookshelf tour. I hope you had a fun time looking at my books. I am really excited to see how my bookshelf is going to expand in 2024, how I will reorganize it for sure, because a lot of these shelves are getting very close to needing to expand to additional shelves. Maybe 2024 is the year I get a second bookshelf. Big goals. Stay tuned for all of that. I don't know if I mentioned at the beginning of the video but my chicken is named ruby just by the way i hope you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like if you did comment down below any of your thoughts are you a knickknack book on your bookshelf kind of person or are you just like a books only on your bookshelf kind of person i would love to know that because i feel like i'm obviously a knickknack on the bookshelf kind of person but i feel like if i had more books you kind of slowly just become a no knickknack person because like you don't stop having room for the knickknacks. If you happen to like me, consider subscribing. I'd be happy to have you. And with that, I will see you in the next one. I hope you're having a wonderful day today.